It is a perfect night for soccer here in the Hub City, Lubbock, Texas. We've got the Big 12 against the Pac-12. Texas Tech against Oregon State. And it comes your way right after this. Welcome everyone to the John Walker Soccer Complex. The Red Raiders at 5-1 on the season, taking on Oregon State at 1-5. I'm Jeff Haxton. Bailey Burmaster is with me here, and it's a perfect night. What are these nights like when you get to go out here? I know you play college soccer. What's it like when you get to go out and roll on a beautiful night like tonight? Especially a 7 p.m. kick. It just gets that Friday feel. These both teams are going to come out hard. Big 12, Pac-12 matchup. Two of the best conferences when you talk women's college soccer. You're at that point also where you're coming closer to conference play. For the Red Raiders, of course, the Big 12 weights. For the Beavers, the Pac-12 weights. What's important about these games as you get ready for the ones that really count? You want to set a standard. Texas Tech did that Friday. They want to keep that going into Sunday. For Oregon State, they're coming off their first win against Dartmouth. They want to keep that momentum going as we get into conference play coming up. Well, we've got some great players out on the pitch tonight. Let's begin with our Carillon scouting report. and We'll start with the Red Raiders. She wears the number 22 and the pink headband. It's Kirsten Davis who has, a, I think, a different gear when she gets it in the open field. She absolutely does. The key for her is getting those defenders on their heels and attacking them. Coach Stone, that's what he loves about her. That's why she's moved to the outside midfield position to take down the outsides, get those crosses in, and be creative to get other players on the ball. Yeah, she's got terrific conditioning, and she'll blow by you. Jade King is a goal-scoring machine for the Red Raiders. I love watching her play. Leads the team and goals, and she's developed into the player that Coach Stone thought she would be. She, last year kind of had that ankle injury, but this year just absolutely dominating the field. She didn't start the first game of the season, but she has a solidified spot this time around. Yeah, and Bailey, she'll score early, too. When you look at Oregon State, I want to start with Mackenzie Weinert. She got the game winner against Dartmouth. And I know they look to her for a lot of offense. And so they had the least amount of goals last season with only 10, the fewest since 2014. She's been a key part to this offense, so you want to watch her when you look at the forwards for Oregon State. Oregon State playing with a ton of youth. They have freshmen and sophomores out there. They'll try to get it going tonight. That's your scouting report brought to you by Carillon, the official retirement community of Texas Tech Athletics. When we come back, we will be getting underway on a gorgeous Sunday night in Lubbock on Texas Tech TV on Fox. Ignite your passions. Explore more. Discover. Embrace adventure. Seek new memories. This summer, drive a Mazda and chase the sun. Spread your wings. Mazda. Feel alive. Let me show you a special place that's creating degrees of impact through innovations in wind technology and environmental toxicology by advancing the science of biochemistry, agriculture, and water as a local and global leader in the arts in a place where the passion for athletics is like no other, all in a unique landscape of beauty, culture, heritage, and pride. A place called Texas Tech. Over 40 years ago, AYSO had a radical idea about girls soccer. Let them play. Now every weekend, girls play soccer with passion. And with the right kind of support, anything can happen. AYSO, great soccer starts here. This Texas Tech TV broadcast on Fox Sports is presented by Carillon. Carillon, the official retirement community of Texas Tech Athletics. All right, we're back. We're ready to go here. Texas Tech and Oregon State coming up. Let's send it down, though, to Matt Micah, who's got Coach Stone. Coach Stone, you do a lot of your damage in the first half. What do you do tonight to get on the same role in the first half? You know, I think that that just speaks to the excitement of our team and at playing at home in front of the home crowd. And we got a lot of upperclassmen that are playing for their last year. 
but it's a 90 minute game. You don't know when those chances are going to come. When they do, you got to take them. And then defensively, only allowing 10 shots on goal on net all season long thus far. What did they do to suffocate the Beavers' offense tonight? Well, you know, that starts at the front. I mean, Allie and, and Jade King have really committed themselves to being good uh, defenders. They, they direct traffic for us, and then our midfield's good at pressing, and our back line's good at reading the game. So if you can start that high up the field defending, you can prevent some shots, and then when they get in your own end, you got to be good box defenders, and that's probably the hardest part of the game. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, guys. And we are underway with the Red Raiders in the gray uniforms tonight. Oregon State in the orange with white trim and the black numerals. Oregon State starting with high pressure on Texas Tech early. Red Raiders have cracked into the top 25. The only loss coming to undefeated Boston College. They lost up there just a few days ago. Played senior night. On Friday night, defeated Florida International 6-0. Texas Tech played Friday. Oregon State did not, so they should we should see a little fresher legs from the Beavers. Oregon State 1-5, and five, just three goals all year. Temperature is 80 degrees here in Lubbock. Just a few clouds, but uh, just a gorgeous September evening here. You can't complain about that. Oh, man. Usually uh, quite a bit of wind here in Lubbock. Not much today. What we have, really not pushing the flags around at all. This is Oregon State. Moving left to right across your screen. Good tackle by Jane Lydiot. Taylor Lamond. Crossing pass, and a good job by Zucchetto to go and get that one. Marissa really hasn't been tested all that much this year. Coming in, just eight saves on the year. Bailey, when you're five and one and you've got eight saves, your defense has played pretty well. Pretty well. I did ask Coach Stone, do you feel like your defense has really been tested with the competition you played? He said yes. When it came to Boston College, that game was fairly chippy. He thought they saw a good offense in them, and same with San Diego State, that 2-1 uh, win for Texas Tech. That one was on the road. Coach Stone has been terrific in California, 6-1 and one for the head coach. He's in his 12th year for the Red Raiders, 131-75-26. And Big 12 champions in 2015. Winning his coach in history here at Texas Tech. He certainly found the groove. Oregon State is coached by Linus Road. He took over back in 2008, Bailey, and had Oregon State in the Sweet 16 by 2009. 11th season with them, three NCAA appearances, trying to get back to the tournament. He featured Jade King. There she was. The Red Raiders will have an early corner. It's one thing about Oregon State. They have just 12 corners all year long. Yeah, that's not a whole lot. You'll see Charlotte Teeter kicking it. Usually sometimes you'll see Brooke Denisic come forward to take those, but it will be Teeter this time around. Teeter had a goal against New Mexico in the season opener. That's hit well and cleared well. Chasing after it, Alia Kevakane from Hawaii. That's played by Oregon State's Tony Malone. Teeter, who was on the corner there, Stone calls her, said she was a lot better than he ever anticipated. He knew she was going to be good, but didn't know she was going to be this good. And she's been starting since for the past couple games now. Oregon State and Texas Tech just underway on this Sunday night affair. It's Kea Vakani strikes it with her right foot. Denisek will be called for the foul. Brooke Denisek, I love watching her. 66th match as a Red Raider, 61st start. She had a goal against West Virginia last year. She's not asked to score goals, but she is so important. Strong, strong defender for this back line. She's one of the glues that holds it together with just her experience back there. There's a reason she's a team captain. Haven't talked about Bridget Skiba. She is the goalkeeper for the Beavers. Just got a touch back there. 
Coach, Coach Rhodes said she's still, there's a learning curve for her, but she's done a really good job this season. She beat out a junior and a freshman to get that position. They lost a very key part of their team and a senior goalkeeper from last season. So she's trying to fill that void a bit. Well, Skiba was her high school athlete of the year. That's for all the sports. So very talented as Jade King gets a touch there near the circle. This is Denisek. Just to wait for assistance. It goes back to Cassie Boren. Boren, Wickenheiser, Denisek, they're really the backbone for the defense. Is that what you see as well? Yes, it's very important because Tom Stone likes to build from the back to get to move the ball, move Oregon State, make them defend, then get those balls up the flanks to get crosses off and be creative when you have players up front like Allie and Jake King. Both teams feeling each other out here. This is Sydney Studer. Appearing in her seventh match this season. There's so much youth on this Oregon State team. On that far side, right in front of the Red Raider bench, Tech wanted a handball, but it wasn't called. I want to talk to you, the 11 freshmen yeah. on this Oregon State team, only two seniors, one who transferred in from her junior for her junior year. Allie Griffin can certainly pester with the best of them. She has the bright yellow neon cleats and the hell the uh, headband to go with it as King puts it towards Skiba. Skiba Salutatorian also at her high school, All-State 2016-2017. We've highlighted Jade King. I want to talk about Allie Griffin a bit. Coach Stone, she's coming off a great season. She was the leading scorer last season. Stone says she has yet to get a goal, but her time is coming. That happens when you're getting double or even triple teeth in some games, which you'll see happen with Griffin because of how well she did last season. Well, Allie, 15 shots this year. She had six goals last season, so that's on tape. Teams are going to find out what your strengths are, especially at the start of this year, and they're going to see number 11 and say, we got to cover her. Exactly. That's exactly what they're thinking. There goes Allie to get it from Denisek. Sharply hit on the cross. Goal kick coming for the visitors from Corvallis. Red Raiders currently 16th in the country when it comes to attendance. This is Skiba. Strikes that with it. Comes off the head of Jane Lydiat. Lydiat transfer in from the University of Oregon. She's seen this Oregon State team before. Maybe not these exact players, but she's played against them. Pretty hard fall from Mackenzie Weiner. She's just now pushing herself upright. And back into the action in a hurry. Coming downhill, Malone. Right to left and gray for Tech. Sun coming on strong here in the later hours of the Sunday evening is Charlotte Teeter. They tried to hit one high, Jade King. It's Kalen Freed. And a foul on Tech, Oregon State with possession. Red Raiders have cracked the top 25. Missed the NCAA tournament last year, and that didn't go over well here. No. Tom Stone not pleased when you're used to winning Big 12 championships and making those NCAA appearances. Heel tap there from Malone. Going down hard, Teeter. It's Taylor Lamond is sending it out to Kevakani. Oregon State moving the ball fairly well early in this match. Most we've seen 
in the matches at home on the Red Raiders. Of course, they shut out Abilene Christian, took care of New Mexico. Big win over Pepperdine. 1-0 on August 19th. We talked a little bit about conference play in the show open. That comes up on September 21st. It'll be here in a hurry. Against West Virginia, a powerhouse in the Big 12. But currently right now, they're one, two, and three, which is unlike, unlikely and unheard kind of, of when you talk about yeah. the Mountaineers. Jade King. Taken from her, strong move by Lamont. Played out in front of Malone. Boren tries to mark her. Malone scoots by. Top of the 18 box. Great clearance there by Boren. Got a strong leg, doesn't she? Emery Wallerich plays it back. Elihia Kebakani from Hawaii enjoys dancing the hula. Don't worry, Bailey, I won't ask you to give it a, a try, okay? Thank You're fine. you. Thank you for that. Not my forte. <laughs> Great movement there by Tech to get Cassie high it up. It's blasted toward the crease. Wow. Goal, Red Raiders! What a shot! Wow. That's what Tom Stone wants to do. He wants to get his outside backs up the corner crossing. This one a little luckier than usual. If you watch the build here, coming up in the replay, you'll see what I mean by when you get... He, first of all, he raves about Cassie Hyatt, this freshman out of Colorado. She's athletic. She really rocked the boat. See, she crosses it. A little luck and it goes just straight to the back of that upper 90. That's very hard for a goalkeeper to get almost impossible. But look at the angle. It's almost like a corner kick with slice spin. Exactly. Hyatt's second goal of the season. What a gorgeous strike. Her second goal in as many matches. Now what's that like? You come off a goal like that for both sides. Take me through what these young ladies are thinking now. One tally has been made. What's it like? Well, for Texas Tech, you're happy to get up in this game early on. For Oregon State, unfortunately, it's a little unlucky. You not you don't see that goal very often right. and to see it go in. Now you're down and you're trying to find momentum again to get back in the other half and get one back. Got to think it gives the Red Raiders a huge boost. Exactly, it definitely does. Hyatt comes up from her position on the field as a defender, plays a little midfield as well, and boom, slices it into the back of the net. During preseason, Tom Stone talked a lot about Cassie. He told this team there are freshmen that are going to rock the boat here. She was one of them. Now she's a core part of this defense, a great outside defender, very fit. Great, just solid defender. Make sure her the, her forwards don't turn on her, and she's just a great part of this back line. Red Raiders looking to attack again here. As this is Brooke Dennison. Beautiful. This is Griffin attempting to catch up. Griffin, Griffin tried, out. She tried to do her best to bring the back the ball back, which is exactly what, it, what you want to do when you're taking the inline there. Unfortunately, just not hard enough, and the ball goes out of bounds beforehand. Great look at that from our camera crew looking down on the pitch here at John Walker Soccer Complex. In the 80 degrees at first touch. Red Raiders lead it 1-0 on the goal from Cassie Hyatt. Oregon State has had some success pushing it towards the offensive side. But the Red Raiders starting to lean on them a little bit, ranked 25th in the country, and this is Denisek. Long outside run. back coming up the flank. Opportunity. Oregon State turns it away. One great thing about this facility is this artificial surface. If you walk down on it, it's very bouncy under your feet. And believe it or not, 
Friday, Lubbock was in a flood advisory. I know, crazy, right? There's a big difference between grass and turf. The ball bounces a little more and the ball moves quicker. So you really have to pace your passes when you're playing on turf. And we were so happy to have the turf because it did rain to where grass might not have been able to, to handle that on Friday. And it doesn't rain very often, but it seems like when it does, it comes in buckets. You never can predict how well a field will drain when you have that amount of rain. So turf solves that problem all around. We were up here Friday, and uh, if you looked around the, the field, outside of the facility, there was uh, lakes, <laughs> standing water everywhere. Didn't have to worry about it, because, uh, again, you have this beautiful uh, surface here. You can handle all those conditions. Kristen Davis, there's that gear we were talking about in the pregame. She wants to. She can go get it from anyone. Red Raiders with a goal from Cassie Hyatt. Lead 1-0. Jordan Duke working diligently at that defensive mid position. Yeah, uh, uh, keeping that one from being a corner kick, there was Carly Wickenheiser. She is appearing in her 68th match, and that's one thing that Texas Tech just has a lot more of than Oregon State currently. She moves from midfield to defense, and Tom Stone says he absolutely loves her at that center back position. She's just a key voice there, and there's once again a reason she's a captain as well. Kayleen Freed just about had a cold there. She had an opportunity. You want to watch this corner. Texas Tech has not given up a goal in the run of play yet. All of the goals against Texas Tech have come off corners, so they want to get this ball cleared out as soon as possible. Great stat there. Malone will take the corner. She has the sun right in her vision, looking to the west as she strikes it. That's a good corner. Red Raiders got up there to get ahead on it. Big clear, big clear there. You know, last year we mentioned that the Red Raiders didn't make the NCAA tournament, went nine, seven, and three. Had one goal losses to Texas, TCU, and Oklahoma State. The Oklahoma State match was right here. Red Raiders return to Stillwater this year. Oklahoma State has a new facility that they are enjoying. That's not too far away. October 5th. That'll be a big game. Huge game. Oklahoma State ranked as well. You have four teams from the Big 12 ranked and four teams from the Pac-12 ranked as well. Who do you peg as the early favorite if you're looking at odds on favorites for a Big 12 champion? I know that's really hard to do, Bailey, but Very I'll throw hard. it at you. Uh, can I give three? Sure. Three to watch out for. One, Texas Tech. This offense they have is about as good as it gets. Next, I want to talk Kansas. They've kind of been a program that's been establishing themselves the past couple years, and they've been on a roll this year. They actually beat Oregon State 3-0. to zero. Third team I want to put in there, Oklahoma State. They've beat teams like Florida and Cal, and Haley Woodard is a top-notch forward through for them who is just very hard to stop. She's an All-American. Davis, left foot sit, high and wide left. The Red Raiders are not shy, at least this evening, about taking long shots, and one of them Jacob. found Jacob. the back of the net. Cassie Hyatt, she was outside the 18 box when she sliced in her goal. <laughs> Oregon State keeper Bridget Skiba, 26 saves coming in. Allowed 11 goals. up to 12 now. Charlotte Teeter, ooh, bodies crumpled there at the middle of the field. Duke was at the bottom of the pile. Freed came down on top of Duke. The Red Raiders tear out of there on a counterattack. Cassie Hyatt pushing forward again. We know what happened last time when she did that. Griffith denied. What terrific timing. 
between the classmates Davis and Griffin. Wow, watch this. Kirsten just crossing it. Gets a great volley on it from Allie Griffin. Just a little unlucky Skiba able to save that one. So close to getting her first goal of the season. That's amazing that she's not scored yet. She has 16 shots and six goals last year. She may get one here this evening. Red Raiders had six goals against Florida International. Davis tried to lead King in through the box. Just too much oomph. Those through balls are very effective. Just like you said, she put a little too much power on it. Skiba was able to come out and get that one. Lights are on here at John Walker Soccer Complex where the Red Raiders are looking for win six on the season. Good run by Benesek. Being chased by Malone. Bailey from here in this position. We're outdoors, we're basically right on the field. I love hearing the communication from these ladies. There's so much importance on that. Cassie Hyde again. Just a little unlikely. Know that the communication is huge. You want to make sure everything is organized, especially with the system Tom Stone plays. He plays a 4-1-3-2. When you're pushing people up, you have to communicate to get Jordan Duke in those positions when those outside backs fly up. Is that a normal formation, or is that something that's fairly unique in this game? It's a little unique. You don't see it as much. You're really used to seeing what Oregon State's playing, which is a 4-4-2. But Tom Stone has perfected this formation for the mere fact of the intel he has of players. With those three midfielders and two forwards, you're able to get all those offensive powerhouses on the field. He loves rotating the forwards in and out. Griffin usually goes out towards the end of the first half as she crosses this one high in the air. Denisek comes all the way up to keep it in the offensive set. Getting ahead on that one off the crossbar. Charlotte Teeter so close. So, so close right there. Charlotte Teeter, Tom Stone says she's just, they want to let her loose, go out and be creative. And she's able to do that here. Brooke Denisic gets the cross, Teeter heads it, and it just gets right there at the crossbar. She had that header. You want to put your head down a little bit more, and that one might be a goal for Texas Tech. Yeah, you're talking about a, a foot to a half a foot from going up 2-0. School is back in session. Red Raider football dominated Lamar yesterday, 77 to zero. Tech volleyball has been out in California for the last two weekends. Coach Tony Greystone's team. This is a, a good fall underway. Golf is underway. Soccer, of course, doing well as Jade King speeds right to left. Crosses, left foot, Skiba squeezes it for Oregon State. That's a perfect example of what Jade King is good at right there. Just taking, going at the, de the defensive backs right there, cutting, and just getting her shot off. Usually that's successful for her. Came down on the shoulder of Denisek. Referee was saying, careful, careful. We had a little jersey pull there from Paula Leblic. Oregon State has been out shot coming into today, 81 to 56. Shots on goal, 38-24. They've also piled up 11 yellow cards. Texas Tech is one of four non-conference opponents that Beavers will play from a Power 5 conference. Tough schedule. Very tough. Griffin launches way high. Allie never met a shot she didn't like. She liked that one. Sooner or later, one of those is going to get by the keeper. Pac-12, not an easy conference, Jeff. Stanford at the top. Washington State, of course, well, let's talk about the Big 12 a little bit, though. TCU at the top, Texas following them, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech sitting in that fifth position.
tucked in behind KU. It's a very competitive league. You just don't get a break. And it's like that way in a lot of sports. Soccer, not any different. That's for sure. As Denisek does a terrific job plugging up the alleyway and then taking it for the Red Raiders. Well, she stood her ground. It is hard to see at this moment. Sun will be gone here in a couple of minutes. It's a good thing the ladies don't have this view. So they're going north and south. What wind we have, by the way, is at the backs of Oregon State. But it's only at about five miles per hour. Sometimes you get the old 30 mile per hour wind and that ball's bouncing off the surface like you wouldn't believe. Is King on side? Yes. But she veers out to let everyone catch up. 1-0 Red Raiders. King. She was out. Talk to Coach Road. You know, he said their schedule to this point has really prepared them, but they have to keep learning and trying to get some of these games to go their way. Linus Road again, I mentioned, he took over the program in 2008, went to the NCAA tournament Ladies, 2009, 10, and 11. He played soccer at Portland, and his squad in 1995 made the NCAA Final Four. He was a prior assistant and associate head coach for eight years before finally becoming the head coach here at Oregon State. Red Raider throw in. Davis shoots up and turns the corner with the cross cleared by Oregon State. Then offsides, flag is up. Davis just a little too far out in front. For the Beavers, they've battled a lot of injury. When I talked to Rode, he said they have a lot of joint problems, so they're kind of facing an injury bug with the squad right now. Coach Rode in his second year took Oregon State to the Sweet 16. That's not easy to do, is it? Not at <laughs> all. And despite being so young, he says the strength about this team is how they keep fighting and face adversity. They're just very, very young. Okay, Bacani. <laughs> Dropped right onto Weinert's head. Charlotte Teeter, who narrowly missed the goal, goes down, and she'll be rewarded there. And got uh, clipped by Tony Malone. Wasn't a lot of contact there, but enough. No, enough to get the foul. Look at her. She does not like the call. We'll see the replay right here. Could be because she's coming from behind a little bit. Refs, very precaution shoulder. with that. Cassie Boren. Wickenheiser. 1-0 Red Raiders. Cassandra Height with the strike. Warren was yelling, Brooke, Brooke. Just a little too far out front. This is about the time where we'll start to see substitutions. Jade King is coming out. Got to remember, she played a game on Friday. She got her work in Friday and was back out here today. Demi Kulazakis replaces Jade King. I enjoy watching Demi play. She has a, a knack of being involved in everything as Winant runs through for the Beavers. They're going downhill, left to right. It's a decent left foot strike from the top of the box and cradled by Zucchetta. Rhodes said she was a key part of this offense, and you saw that there. She tacks the defense, the defense, and she tries to strike, but Zoo's just there to stop one again. Zucchetto, 19 matches last year, shared time at goalkeeper, her 26th match tonight. Demi Kulazakis. Kulazakis, just a great bench player for this Texas Tech team. She comes off, she does the work, and she's buzzing around. Okay. 
This will be an OSU throw in coming. I like the, the uniform tops. It's almost like a sunset, which we're witnessing right now. It's like an ombre, an ombre of orange. Darker at the bottom and kind of fades up at the top. A little lighter orange at the top. You're speaking way over my head with that, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, it's like a sunset. You've got all these cool terms. An ombre goes from lighter to darker. Thank you. Here we go. Kulazakis to Ali Griffith. Give credit to Oregon State. Snuffed out that initial attack. Teeter wants a secondary look. Instead, she'll earn a corner kick. Ashley Fonson, just a key part to this defense. Road really praised her and said she was one of the players that stepped up and kind of gives that leadership when they don't have the seniority they usually do. Sun is going behind the grandstand. And everybody on this side says hooray. It's headed out of there. It's close to being punch out by the keeper. That clearance, Skiba. that clearance coming from Pantuso. Another key part of that de defensive line. And Pantuso's in her 62nd match, so she's experienced. She's played every game since she's arrived on campus. She's a, a leader for this OSU team. Kay Vakani out there. She's making just her third appearance this season, but starting her third match. Coming. You see Weiner go down hard. Yeah, tripping over that extended leg by Carly there. Short corner allows Davis to race toward the middle. Right at Skiba. Griffin nearly had the rebound. Great strike by Kirsten Davis there. Allie Griffin for the follow-up, but Skiba just able to scoop it right up. Red Raiders 5-1, and one, Beavers 1-5. One and five. But coming off the win over Dartmouth, You'll here's see Davis. Here. The strike, Allie Griffin's right there to follow up as it bounces, but Skiba able to scoop it before she gets even close to it. That was... Uh, this, this might be past your, your prime here, but that was Lucy and Charlie Brown. Okay. Charlie Brown coming up to kick the football. Uh huh. And, and Lucy she's scooping it. Says no, no, sorry, Chuck, not this time. Sorry, I had to get in a Charlie Brown reference tonight. Who does it? Hyatt has the lone tally. But Griffin really leaps high in the air there. Kulazakis. Carving it out in front of Davis. Just out. You can tell Griffin, she really wants that first goal. She's going after everything, really being aggressive. Coming up there to affect that one, Helena Brown. Red Raiders up to eight shots on goal tonight. Just one for Oregon State. You'll see it here, Kirsten Davis with the strike. An easy one for Skiba to get, though. That's boomed nicely by Skiba. Boren plays it to herself. Says, if you're going to let me have all this acreage, I'll take it. And taking it away, though, for Oregon State, Sydney Studer. She's a freshman. Coach Rhodes said to watch her, though, because she's really solidified herself in the midfield for this team. Oregon State repels that attack and wants to counter. Counter attacks are where you're going to be effective when you're going up against Texas Tech. They push a lot of numbers forward, so you want to capitalize on those when you have those opportunities. That was Cassie Hyatt there, stopping the momentum. Cassie will check out of this matchup, and Gabby Puente is in as you get a good look at Helena Brown. Usually, Coach Stone, you get under 10 minutes. Allie Griffin is a target to be substituted for. And then she won't start the second half. Bring her out there with as fresh legs as possible. 
Because again, these girls run miles during these matches and not at a leisurely pace. No, five to seven miles is usually the average when you play a soccer game. So you want to make sure you're subbing, giving those girls who are doing a lot of work some breather room. Get a good look at Denisek. LeBleak was tracking her. It'll be a Red Raider throw in. Denisek will take it. Beautifully done by Griffin. Beavers take possession. Taylor Liddell. Cut out by Boren. Yeah, you'll see them moving the ball throughout the defense. The defense. That's how they like to start building to get the ball forward and start their offensive attack. Unfortunately, it goes out there with Point Day. Oregon State trying to make something happen by throwing players forward. The Tech's defense able to stop them. Teeter, Griffin, offside. Wow, that would have been a great through brawl had Allie Griffin stayed on sides. But that's what you have to do when balls like that are played. You want your defense to step up a little bit. You'll see it here. Charlotte Teeter being creative. She plays the through ball, and Allie's just about mm. probably two yards off. Yep. Everybody is a fan, though. They come to their feet when they see that, those neon yellow shoes churning across the pitch here. And Timing is very hard on those. You have to have it just right. It is all about timing. All right, you've got nine and change left. Strategy for both squads here as we close in on intermission. Texas Tech, you want to keep the same momentum. You don't want to give up a goal, so you want to be defensively strong and be aggressive. For Oregon State, I'm saying push numbers forward, try and get one before half, give, give some good mojo going into the locker room. Oregon State has been outscored this season 13 to three. So any kind of off offensive success would go a long way for them here tonight. Again, they're on the road, playing a top 25 team in Texas Tech. Red Raiders lone loss to undefeated Boston College. Denisek, what hustle. And kept it in play for as long as she could and earned a throw in. Read that pass really well, knew it was coming, stepped up and stepped in the way to get it. Here comes that Allie Griffin substitution right as Dennis said. able to get her foot in, trying to play it while she's on the ground. Texas Tech getting thrown. Gwenny Puente in for Allie Griffin as she tosses her the target jersey. Gwenny Puente, an institution, 67th match. Right now, 54 starts, eight career goals, four assists. That's for Gwenny, twin sister of Gabby. Now, they're not in the same classification. Gwenny due to graduate and uh, move on. Gabby will be back next year. Both, just the paired twins, both of them are very similar in the fact they hustle on this field. They do not stop moving, they're aggressive, especially for, you know, they're probably both 5'5", five, five, I would say, aggressive for not being the biggest girls on the field. Skiba to goal kick. <laughs> Never want those balls to bounce in the midfield. They could become dangerous. Oregon State wanted a handball. It was said, handball, sir, please. They were very uh, polite about it. Didn't get the call they wanted, though. It was played into the 18 box. Galloping to go get this one, Helena Brown. Big shoulder out of play there from Gabby Puente. Carly Wickenhauser can really clear that ball back there. It's one of her strengths. This is played out in front of Kirsten Davis. Great ball by Demi. No whistle for a foul. Kirsten bracketed. Some good defending there by Fonson on Kirsten, being able to slow her down and get the stop. That's huge. Tech begins to lean on the Beavers here. A great effort by Kulisakis, but it rolls out. Freed there, able to block it from Demi. That's exactly what you want to do. 
This ball that she played was great. She had it out in front, and it was curling into Kirsten Davis' line, so she was able to run right into it. In the Red Raiders, eight shots on goal, just one for Oregon State. Teeter climbs the ladder using the back of Sydney Studer. You talk about shots on goal. Tom Stone says their conversion from shots on goal and shots that actually go into the goal needs to be better. For every four to five shots on goal, you'd like to have a goal out of that. That's very difficult to do, but that's what they want to see. Throw in for Liddell of Oregon State. Jabbed off of Weinert. That will be Texas Tech's throw in. Mackenzie Weinert, the lone goal against Dartmouth that was the game winner. Coming in, number 13 for Oregon State, 11 shots, two on goal. That leads the team. Five minutes left in the first half. Tech leading 1-0 on the goal from Cassie Hyatt. Jordan Duke tried to play a through ball there, but with four minutes, got some tired legs. No one's making that run. Come on, Tech, we need one more. Do you ever get to a place where it's strictly keep away? Yes, I think so. I don't think that moment is right now necessarily, considering there's still a other half, even though you want to get out of this half without Oregon State getting a goal. You picture a wheel, and you can be completely conservative or dial it back just a little bit. Like right now, this is not completely conservative. This no. is Denisek going and attacking. No, not at all. And you don't want to play conservative right now. It's still too early. And plus, you're up, and you have good momentum. We have yet to see maybe a real threat from Oregon State. They've had some chances, but none that you should say, okay, do we need to drop more back and defend a little bit more? We've seen this a lot tonight. Bridget up. Athletic and smart. High School Athlete of the Year. At Portland Sunset High School and the Salutatorian. Born booms that one all the way to the double T. Great stuff there by Allison Pantuso. Into the back for the Red Raiders, number 32, Jen Rose. Jen Rose going to come on for the Red Raiders. She logged quite a few minutes against Florida International. 25 of them. Scrappy would be a word to describe Jen Rose. A lot of players got a lot of minutes in that game. After they went up in the first half, were able to sit some of the starters and get some new faces out there, and Tom Stone sure did like what he saw from her. Rose is from the state of California, Orange, California, Canyon High School, freshman midfielder, 5'2". Such a contrast to what we had. We had uh, Tom Stone in the complete rain gear on Friday night. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked like uh, late October, early November. Everyone uh, had their jackets on with their hoods up, trying to stay away from that rain right there trying to change change the side where the ball is but closed down kind of coming over her back a little bit probably why the foul was called <laughs> well i said rose and scrappy that was scrappy right through the back of freed you want to talk scrappy sometimes you just need those aggressive players you'll need that specifically when you go into big 12 play it's in a very aggressive conference well and one thing that i don't know if everyone understands you just a casual observer if you get out here and you get this close to this game it's physical it's very physical. Not for the faint of heart. You better be ready to go. Quinny Puente does a great job of running through traffic. Then she wanted the ball back. Teeter. Teeter trying to be creative and find something there. Just not, not there, so she'll pass it back to just restart the building process. Able to find Brooke on the outside. Dennis Sack on the cross. Too deep. Not a bad idea, but you prefer that ball on the ground a lot easier to finish. As far as striking the ball there, what are we talking about? We're talking about just like inches from 
high loft or line drive or line, on the ground? Line, line drive on the ground. You want to strike it with your laces, make it hard, because you never know what's going to happen. You drive it into that, that six-yard box, it might ricochet and go in. It might be an own goal. You never know what's going to happen, but it's a lot easier to finish the ball that's on the ground than anything that might be in the air. Just 45 seconds left in the first half here. It's cooled off considerably. Red Raiders with a goal from Cassie Hyatt. Shea O'Connor had great control there to get the ball down. Unfortunately lost it on her next touch. Puente to Puente to Puente and out of bounds. Gabby Gwinney tried to get it back to Gabby. Probably First half is done. See this, yeah. Skiba will take her time getting the ball, and it will be over for the first. Zucchetto just says, we are done. And the Red Raiders in the first half, leading 1-0 to zero over the visitors from Corvallis, Oregon State. Great goal coming from Cassie Hyatt. That freshman pushed up, got the cross off, and with a little bit of luck, it just hit that upper 90 and just sunk right in. Very hard for a goalkeeper to stop something like that. She probably was not expecting it to come out. Tom Stone always coaching right there with Jade King. We're back right after this. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox.